So what I want you to do is I put this equation here, this function, to find two points. Okay, find two points. And then ask yourself, do you think it would be a line? Yes or no? And why? Okay, who has a point for like this graph that we are just pretending we don't know the line? Yeah. Zero. Zero? Zero five. Another point? Uh, three fourteen. Three fourteen. Yeah, three times three max is not thirteen. Five point. Oh, it's going along way off the charts there. What's that? One eight. One eight. Seven twenty six. Seven twenty six. Negative one two. Oh, we're going backwards. Negative one two. Let's plot some of these points, ones that'll fit at least. Negative one two. Zero five one eight uh one zero two three I can't fit three fourteen. Well, there's three points. If you knew nothing about this function and you saw those three points, would you think that the the, the rest of the graph, if I kept plotting point after point after point after point, would wind up in a straight line? Yes. Why? B is going Well, are these points in a straight line? Yes. Well, they're in a diagonal. Diagonal can still be straight, right? As long as it doesn't turn yeah. a curve at all. It could be a straight line. So it's straight does not curve. So what convinced me that these are really, truly in a straight line? You know, going forever doesn't make you a straight line. You could be a curve that goes forever. Smaller dots. So if you wanted to really do curvy, you could do every equation and see that they actually line up with each other. Well, let me say, if, if I just, uh, I do draw a straight line from here to there. I'm assuming that all the points between actually lay on a straight line. In reality, make that straight line, right? And then I connect these with a straight line. Is this a straight line? The way how you drew it, no, but. Theoretically. Theoretically, is it a yes. straight line? Maybe a straight line that would be a straight line. So, there. there you go. Straight line. There. 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 So, two straight lines. Now I draw two straight lines between these two sets of points. Is this long thing here a perfectly straight line, or is it just a little bit? Straight line, or is it a little bit angled? Angled. Not angled. Whichever answer you give, I want you to tell me why. Why is it not angled? Why is it angled? Can't base it just off of my drawing. My drawing might not be perfect. What is it that makes you convinced that, uh, in another word, a straight line from here to there, from here to there, if I drew a straight line from here to there, would it perfectly go through that point? No. Yes. Yes, we are going to know. Well, are you talking about like that? No, I'm trying. I'm trying to emphasize yes. this point to this point, yeah. but the straight line. Yeah. If I draw it straight from here to there, will it go through that point? Yes. It won't miss it at all. Not even a tiny nanometer nope. between the line and that point? What makes you so sure? Perfectly straight through. How are you so sure that it will go perfectly straight through? Because it's constantly over to the left one and down the left constantly. Four? Or over to the right one and up one constantly. Okay, I'm going to go over to the right one and up four. I mean up three. Two. Oh, three. That's exactly. That's the exact behavior that makes this thing a line. Really? And that's what I was thinking the entire time. That's the behavior that makes this thing a line. I mean, we can put it other ways, but this goes over one and up three. This goes over one and up three. So yeah, it's going to be a straight line always from any point that you're at. Over one and up three gets another point. Over one and up three gets another point. Like, there's definitely a straight line 
between points that just follow a steady step-like pattern. Right? What do we call that? A function. What do we call that? Slope. Over one of three? Slope. Slope. Called a function. Also known as M. Okay. What if this uh, this was in uh, feet and this was in seconds? Y was in feet and uh, X was in seconds. What would that three one ratio represent? Three feet in one second. Three feet in one second. What's that sound like? Second, that's even a better way to say it. But if I was like, oh, that guy, three feet per second, velocity. yeah, he's going, his speed is, his velocity is three feet per second. Right? That guy, three feet per second. That guy, man, he's always three feet per second. <laughs> right? Now, what if this was dollars and this was hours? Dollars per hour. How would you? Say that. What's that? A wage. A wage, yeah. That's a really good highfalutin word. Wage. Okay, you got velocity, that's a speed, right? That's a that's a certain amount of distance over a certain amount of time. You got a wage, that's a certain amount of dollars in a certain amount of time. Okay? All of these are examples of you want to take a crack at it? We're talking about how things are changing, right? When we say three feet per second, there's kind of a picture in our mind of a guy moving, changing, right? He's not staying in one place, he's moving around, he's going places at three feet per second. If we talk about three dollars per hour, it's a pitiful wage, but it's a wage, it's changing every second you work, you made a little bit more money, right? Are you agreeing on that? Right? Just making money, our, our, our money is changing. These are all examples of rates. A rise, the reason the yeah. reason why this rise over run is in your brain is because someone on that a nice math teacher at one point uh, thought Kids love uh, when words start with the same letter. So I'll think of two words that start with the same letter that represent the things they're supposed to represent. Rise being a vertical thing, run being, I guess, a horizontal thing. Things can run vertically. So this run thing, you can see, like, these mnemonic devices, they're not the best. But if we talk about a vertical change over a horizontal change. Okay, that, that makes a little more sense. Okay, so this is the change, the, the vertical change, right? The vertical change. The vertical just refers to the graph, not like a thing in real life. Like, I could go three feet per second, but not be going vertical. I could be going horizontal. Vertical just means on the graph. So the vertical part of the graph changes by a certain amount, and the horizontal part horizontal changes also by a certain amount. And that ratio is called rise over run. It's called the slope. It's called the rate of change. Okay. The thing that uh, incoming college students struggle with a lot is seeing the slope of a line as a rate of change. They see the slope of a line as the thing that I use to draw a line. But they don't see it as the rate of change of the y to the x. The rate of change of the y to the x. Is that? What's that? That makes a lot more sense. I started thinking about it. It's just the rate of something that's coming towards you or going further away from you. Right. Is this, so this thing is getting, uh, I guess, further away from you because it's got a positive and a positive. Second, if it's three dollars per hour, right? It's positive of getting more money per uh, per hour. Okay, so 
how can I tell by looking at this equation that it's going to have this over one of three kind of a steady, stair steppy kind of a pattern? So every time x changes, y is going to change by just like it's a multiple of three, right? That's never going to change. So like the y just goes up just so much, so many times as much as x, right? X goes up, y goes up by just a multiple of that, right? If I go over one, I go up three. If I go over two, then y goes up six. If I go over three, then y goes up how much? If I go over three, then y goes up how much? Nine, yeah, so why does it go up to nine? Now, not all functions do that. Let me show you a picture. Uh, here's a picture of graph. Is that a line? It's not. No. It's a curvy line. It's a curvy line. Actually, a line is a straight curve. This is a curve. Lines can't be curved. Curves could be straightened out. Okay, so if I move over to the right one here, okay, and then I move up, let's say I moved up three, let's just say we did. Now if I move over one more, will I move up three again? No. no. I'll move up. Move up like one. If you want. Move over one, up three, over one, and then up one. If I move over one again, will I move up three? No, I will move up. Uh, here's an interesting one. If I move over one again, will I move up? No, you move down. Okay. Let's say I did. Uh, let's say I was a, a really strict mathematician, and I said, "Well, I did go up. How much did I go up?" Negative. Negative. I went up negative. So, but still accurate, right? Negative 0.5. We went up negative 0.5. So we went down 0.5. So. This does not have a consistent over up kind of a pattern, a slope. Now, in between here, there's kind of a slope between here and there. There's kind of a slope between here and there. There's kind of a slope between here and there. But uh, just like with the guy being shot out of the cannon, what did we discover about his, his speed? It's constant. Always changing that slope, right? If it, we talked about how if it's steep, how would you describe the guy's movement. It's just going constantly up. Well, how would you compare this to this? This guy being shot out again, this guy being shot out again. One above it, he's just shot out like he's going quick. The other one's kind of gradually increasing. Okay, so they're both having, they both both have like a constant speed, right? Three feet per second, five feet per second, like that doesn't change. But this guy and this guy, when you compare this guy to this guy, you would say he's going compared to this guy. It's like that guy, he's going up like that, could be going like 10, and the other one could be going like 4, maybe or something like that. In the same amount of time, though, right? Because yeah. this is time from here to there, time. there, the same amount of time. So what's that word I would use to describe this guy's? His velocity. I mean, how would I could describe this guy moving versus this guy moving? The top guy's going faster than the fast. Fast. He's going faster. The line is steeper, so he's going to be moving faster. He's going to be, put it in more specific terms, he's going to cover more distance, more distance for the same time. Right? 10 in a second rather than 4 in a second. More distance in the same amount. Or the same distance in less time, right? This guy would have to go for a really long time before he covered that same amount of distance. Okay. Um, let's see. Y equals five x minus three. Right? Is that going to be a straight line? If you look at the graph of this function, will it be a straight line? How can you be so sure? Keep it in mind.
mind when Noah told us exactly what makes a line a line? Can you remind us, Noah, what, what exactly the behavior is that makes a line a line? So you go over some and you go up the same, like every time you move over one, you move up the same amount. You move over one, you move up the same amount. Move over two, move up the same amount, move over two. As long as you move over the same amount, you'll move up the same amount. Basically. More or less if the negative, then you'll move left. Yeah. Up, 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 or like down. Yeah. yeah. So will this do that? Will the graph of this function do that? Will it go over some and up some? Will it go over some and down some? Yes. And why do you say so? Because it's going to be negative? I'm sure you can get a positive number. Yeah, you can. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so the y will not be in here, Alan. Because since y, um, uh, not it's always going to be, uh, it's like the same, so it's just kind of flipped and going the opposite direction. So it's going to be, it's not going to be going up, it's going to be going down. Yeah, the y will, like, we'll start going down to this negative y. Okay. Like you, you could get in a positive and all on x is, but it's still going to end up eventually going down in that direction. All right. Let's try it out. Let's find uh, let's find two points each. Let's see what happens. And we'll, we'll look at those points again on the graph together. All right. Who's got a point? One, two. Is that? One, two. One, two. Anybody get one, two? One, two. One, two. One, five, seven, plus five, plus six, is two. Okay, another point? Zero, negative three. Zero, negative three. Let's get two more. Uh, five, twenty-two. Five, twenty-two. Uh, three, twelve. Three, twelve. What do you think, Branson? Is that going down, 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 down? It's not going like, I think I kind of explained it on that or something. Like, it's not always going to go like, it's not going to just go like straight down. But right. have, like. Like if it wasn't negative three, it could always be higher. Like if it was the other way, it'd still actually go up more. But since it's negative three, you're still taking away. Like it's getting, it's hard to explain. Like it's getting knocked down three, but since well five's already kind of just the way it is, is that it'll still usually be end up in the positives and like positive effects. So it might start even though lines don't have a start and yeah. end, right? It might start negative. Negative three, yeah. but eventually it'll climb up into the positive. Yeah, it's just it'll do it slowly because the negative three is still taken away from it. Okay, but uh, it's still got because it got to go in both directions anyway, but it's just horizontal then. So you say it'll do it slowly. Yeah, it could do it quicker. It's like it just really depends on what the x is you start out with. Well, what? So here's I think here's what I'm hearing you say, Branson. So that we have a zero negative three. One, two, two, what did you do? Two, uh, seven, seven, three, twelve, which I could just barely fit here. And it just keeps going up like that, right? And we can go negative one, and negative eight, so on. So it's, it's here, right? And it's steadily going. Is it a straight line? Why is it straight? Because it's constantly going to the right one. There's no change going on. Changing going up by the, of its rate. Right. The way that it's we change going. from one point to another is the same. Right? It's constant. It's a constant change. Would that be fair to say? Yep. It's a constant change. What decides how fast this function is changing, this equation right what part of it is deciding how fast it changes? The x? The y that can be either going up or down. It usually is affecting whatever x, whatever the next one usually gets. Okay. Here, let's talk about uh, another function. Say y equals Which of these is going to be changing faster? Why 
do you say that's changing faster? Because it's hard to figure five. Sorry. Five. So it, no, it's hard to do. It seems like it has to do with whatever you multiply x by? Yeah, but we're saying, like, I didn't really catch all I think it was. So like, I'm going, like, what's doing this? Because, like, the four is still taken away from that. Uh -huh. So it's still kind of, like, regulating how quick it can actually. Because otherwise, it'd be going whatever seven times x is. Like, let's say five, it'd be going, like, then 35. But now it's going 31 because of the y. Um... You're saying one thing, I think that you maybe mean another thing. Because let's look at this function, y equals seven x plus three. Which one is changing faster? It's the seven x plus three now. Seven x plus three. Because you're adding three instead of taking away four. I don't mean it like just because it's taken away, I mean it's just because of the y. Like where the y is, Still got zero, the y still gonna add to it no matter what. Or take away from it. Uh let's see. Unless the y is zero or something like that, which is kind of here, let's try this. Uh, let's let's talk about uh Adam and the diverse here, so Luke. Susan finds twelve dollars. Just find it. Find it work. Adam gets robbed, and they take uh, twenty dollars. So they took twenty dollars from that guy. It's twenty dollars less than he just uh, had before he got robbed. Uh, Susan had it. She's found twelve dollars, so she gets to put twelve dollars into her. Wallet. Okay. Now they both they trudge on. Uh, Adam trudges a little more than Susan, and uh, they get to work. Now they they get to work, and they both have uh, same kind of job. Like Adam and Susan both make, let's say, fourteen dollars an hour. That's a pretty impressive job. Now, um, and the, let's say they both work for X hours, for an unknown number of hours, okay? So let's say like, I'm going to tell you X later, but you don't know. Write an expression that you would use, once I tell you what X is, to calculate how much money Adam has, Calculate how much money Susan has at the end of x hours. Okay, so I want you to write that expression. It should have a place for you to plug x in, right, in the appropriate place where hours would go. Well, let's start with Susan. Right at the end of the day, well, even if she doesn't work at all, how much money will she have? Plus twelve dollars. She'll have twelve dollars. She'll be twelve dollars more than she was. Starts at 12. Okay. Now, how are, if I told you the number of hours, what would you do with that to figure out how much money she made just from working? Right. 14 by whatever hours. 14 multiply 14 by whatever hours. Whatever hours is x, and you would do what with 12 and 14 x estimate? Uh, you would um, you would divide by two. Don't worry about that. <laughs> she's got twelve dollars when she walks into work, and she's gonna make fourteen dollars an hour times however many hours, right? And divide she's, total. she's gonna do fourteen times x times twelve. Um, Four, x times twelve. Or, 
I need 14 times x. 14 times x, okay. What about the 12? What, what, how does that factor? Um, I don't know. You go 14x plus 12. So we add them together, right? This is 14x, there's all that work and work and work and work and work, and at the end of the day, she just, boom, just adds the $12 she found. Yes. Now, Adam, how much money does he have when he walks into his work? Negative $20, right? Add 20 and now he has 20 less than that, okay? How are we gonna calculate how much he's made over the day? 14x minus 20. So I can just add these two amounts together. Starts out with 20 negative dollars, negative $20, and then makes $14 every single hour that he works, right? Now, what we're talking about is the change. Whose money is changing faster? Not who has more money, but whose money is changing faster than the other? Adam. Adam's money is changing faster? I think it's Susan. No. Susan's money is changing faster. Because she's getting more. Is she get, she's getting more? If they both work for the same amount of time, Susan will have, well, will she have more money or less money than Adam? She'll have more, more money than Adam, but Adam's money is changing faster because he's losing his money. His money is changing faster. Okay, let's say they work for, uh, I'm just gonna ask you who has more. You don't even have to calculate it exactly. After 10 hours, who has more, Susan or Adam? Susan. Okay, after 20 hours, does Susan have more or Adam have more? Susan has more. I'm going to the answers really quickly. After 40 hours, who has more, Susan or Adam? Susan. Susan. Well, okay, so it's not happening every day, you said, right? Right, but this is a really long day. No, <laughs> um, it's a 40 hour day. Susan's uh, more or less. She'll always have that plus 12 because it's still the same day going on. We'll still always have that minus 20. So it'll still have to be like $20 short from when we started out. Without how much you have. But we don't know how much you started out with. Um, yeah, but we don't know how much you started out with either. So. Yeah, so we'll just have to go with he started with 20 less than he had, and she started with 12 more than she had, right? Like they're really what this is calculating is like how much more money they have at the end of the day than when they woke up that morning. When he woke up that morning and he had at least $20 in his pocket. Right? Now he has 20 less, now he's kind of in the hole. She starts out ahead. After 100 hours, is Susan gonna have more or Adam gonna have more? Susan. How, how are you able to answer, like, Adam will never catch up? Yeah. Not until tomorrow. Not until tomorrow, like when he doesn't get robbed? He might have, <laughs> but that 20, the thing is, you'll still always have, like, he lost $20 in the very beginning. Right. Before, like, you start working, Yeah. you're doing. So no matter how much, like they'll never actually catch the two because he already has an extra 12 in front of them. And he's still behind like 20. Don't people catch up, don't they? Yeah, like they could be like eventually, like it's not, like he'll, you can make it up, like, and it's $20. So he'll probably make it up within like the first two hours of working. At least two hours, it'll definitely be. That means he only made $8 dollars that day, while Susan made like 30, like 40 something. Well, but what about after 347 hours? Will I give enough time for Adam to catch up and have as much money as Susan has? No. Why not? Unless oh, he's working this time. Because if you have $340, you still have like another 12. Mm -hmm. That's another, that's like 352. And he's still at 340. Hmm. Could I change something about Adam, his situation, that would enable him to catch up to Susan some of time eventually? Yeah. Over what could you change? Um, amount of, uh, how many hours he has. How many hours? Okay, so I'm gonna say that since they're both X, that they're gonna work the same amount of hours. Someone came up to him being $34. Okay, we could change how much money, you know, yeah. we could give him some money. Okay, let's say that I don't let you change either of those things. I don't let you change, like they have to work for the same amount of time. You can't give Adam any money. Is there anything else you could change that would enable Adam to at one point have the same amount as Susan? How much he made? Would that make a difference? Well, if he had a class that actually put him first, like, 
It's still just one ahead, but per hour. If he makes fifteen dollars an hour instead of fourteen, will that make a difference? Yeah. Eventually, he will catch up. If he just keeps now, he will. To it, yeah, he'll catch up. So he works for enough hours. It's inevitable. He'll definitely catch up to Susan yeah. and have more money than her after that. Yeah. So what is it about it? What is it about this that tells us how fast? Like, do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. How fast is it changing? Is really a measure of I don't know how to say it any other way. How fast your amount is changing? Not what your total amount is at any time, but how fast it's changing. Right? How is their money changing now compared to each other? Okay, so now it'd be okay, okay. Now, now it's the same. Alright, so I guess so why does it really make like it makes a difference, but in the long run it kind of doesn't. It makes a difference in how much money there is right now. Yeah. Or how many miles you've gone right now. Right, so I get it. So like at the very end after the, it stops going for infinite yeah. how it's supposed to go. Then it matters, but the whole way until then it doesn't. Well, at any time, Susan will have more money than Adam yeah. in this situation because we always we know that because their money is changing at the same rate. The rate of change in their money versus time, right? Dollars per hour is the same for Adam and the same for Susan, right? And the amount of difference between their, their two dollar amounts, right, will always be the same, right? Susan will always have how much more money than Adam? Plus 12. She'll always have $12 mm -hmm. more than Adam? Mm -hmm. I'll just spend her $12 more than yeah. something. You sure she'll have $12 more than Adam has? 30, 12. 30, 12? 30, 30, 32. 32. She has $32 more uh, okay, than yeah. Adam always. He'll, okay, it'll go up as like as you increase, like on the thing, the Y will also go up. Where the difference gets bigger and bigger, but then Adams, I since it's negative, I think I'm not sure. I think it might start to get positive after a while. I'm not sure on that though. What will get positive? Um, the negative twenty. Like it might go from now it's nineteen. Now it's nineteen. You just made up that other dollar or something like that. Well. The amount that he started with will always be the amount that he started with, right? No matter how long he works, it won't change how much he started with. It will change how much he has, and he'll definitely work enough hours. And he won't even care that he had that $20 loss, because if he works for tons and tons of hours, he'll have tons and tons of money, right? But he'll never have as much as Susan has for the same amount of time. He'll always be $32 poorer than Susan, always. Unless he got pay raise. Unless something changes, unless something somebody just gives him some money out of the blue, or he gets a raise, which means his rate of change becomes different, becomes more or less. More. More. His rate of change, his dollars per hour becomes more. Right? It's the only way that that could change. If they worked forever and all in eternity, they worked for infinity hours, Susan would still have two dollars more than Adam okay she might be, Adam might have a million dollars but Susan will have how much thirty two dollars right you still are way in the positives but Susan only has thirty two more dollars almost because added. this over and up thing doesn't change unless right? Susan's a really poor lady and Adam was a rich dude true maybe Adam was a billionaire and he's like twenty dollars I'm going to my $14 an hour job. <laughs> I'm going to work my butt with $20. <laughs> I, I like to start working my $14 an hour job just for fun. Even though I'm a billionaire, I get $14 an hour. Okay. So, what we're talking about here is that the rate of change is that number that you multiply by x, right? Anytime I give you a, a situation like that, you're going to write an equation that looks just like that. By just like that, I mean. There's some starting amount. We can think of it as a starting amount. Any equation for real life really has that going on. It has a starting amount, right? Plus the amount that we gain, right? How fast are we gaining it? It depends on the number that I'm multiplying by x, the rate that I'm multiplying by x. So I'm gonna make up another situation that is gonna be that, that's like the dollars per hour situation, but it's different. 
telling stories, it's kind of a hard thing to do. Okay, tell us a story about that involves miles per hour. gas mileage, which would mean that so they both get like 18 miles per gallon or something. Okay, so that, so I'm not writing. Um, 18 miles a gallon. Okay. So there's a car, one car gets 18, another one gets 18. Mm -hmm. Okay. Tell me more about that situation. Um, one person, one one of the people are driving and then they uh, get less, they get less um, gas mileage at one point, but then the other person doesn't. One of them ran into traffic. And their gas mileage changes. <laughs> no, their time changes. Their time changes? Yes. Okay. Um, let's see. Two miles per gallon. We come back to this one. What do you got? Okay. Uh, but you could do if um, well, someone left, like, I don't know, it's 20 miles ahead of someone, and they're both going the same speed, two cars. Uh -huh. One car is 20 miles ahead of the other one, another car is, um, let's say, 10 miles behind because he had to stop or hurt a knee or something uh -huh. like that. And, but they're both going the same speed over X. Um, so, like, uh, 45 X amount of time minus. So it's a 45, 45, like the speed that they're both going. Miles per hour, maybe. Yeah. Okay. So this guy's going 45 miles per hour, yeah. but he started ahead? Yeah, so he has a 45x plus, let's say, 10 miles. He was 10 miles ahead for some reason. The other guy got delayed. Yeah. So this other guy would be just what? Uh, he's still 45x, so it's the same. 20 miles or five miles or more. Then, so this guy starts, does he start out 10 miles ahead of this guy? Yeah, because I don't want to, well, he's now 10 miles ahead, so I got to tell him that. Okay, so shouldn't it be like plus zero? All right, yeah, plus zero, sorry. Because like he's just there, yeah. he's at the starting point, and this guy is 10 miles more than yeah. this guy. So if I put minus, if I were to put minus 20. Yeah. And this guy would actually 30 ahead of this guy, but this guy could be 10 miles past the hunting cabin. Yeah. And this guy is 20 miles, he still has 20 miles to go before he even gets to the hunting cabin, something like that. Yeah, right? that's what I uh, So it could be like that. Um, but they're, they're going, they're both going 45 miles per hour, so will this guy ever catch up to this guy? No. Why not? Because he's always 10 miles ahead. So this guy's always 10 miles 30. ahead? 30 miles ahead of this guy. How do you know he's always 30 miles ahead? Because of the, he lost 20 miles somehow. The other guy gained 20, 10 miles. That doesn't tell me why I know that they're, the one guy's never going to catch up. Because the other guy's 30 miles. Has anybody ever been 30 miles ahead of someone and then the guy behind caught up? No, because they're going the same pace. Okay, so they're going the same speed. The rate of change of their distance versus time is the same, right? If we were to graph it, what would be same about their graphs? They'd be parallel. Yeah. They would be parallel, which, but what about the, the so you're right, they would be parallel. Yeah. Those guys, like, at any time that I looked at them, right? Uh, let's choose this time. Oh, they're still far apart. Right? Let's look at this time over here. Nope, this guy's still ahead of this guy. Right? 
what about the graphs are the same, being parallel, or something same about being parallel, what's the same about two lines being parallel? Their rate of change. The rate of change, which on a graph is also called slope. the slope, right? The rate of change, the slope, the miles per hour, the dollars per hour, the feet per second, or whatever it is, it's the same, okay? It's that per thing, right? That dollars per hour, that feet, dollar feet per second miles per year whatever like anything can be a rate something with respect to something else dollars per hour feet per second miles per year inches per year dollars per second whatever it can all be a rate okay so uh, it's that rate that tells me how fast my whatever the y is is increasing Uh, tell me a story about mm, in your notes. Like, just tell me a story about that equation. Who's got a story about this equation? What fits with this equation? saying that uh, somebody, it was John, right? And somebody took from him $17. But then he goes to work. And he makes $3 a day. Okay, so somebody took $17. You tell me uh, what you would expect, like how much money would he have just from the story how much money he would have after uh, seven days? That would be three times seven, twenty-one minus seventeen. Three times minus seventeen is twenty-one. Twenty-one minus seventeen is how much? Four dollars. Yep. Four dollars after seven days. Let's see if this equation bears that. That's a terrible day. Right? Seven days. Seven days go by. You should have four dollars. Let's see if that works here. How would I test it out? Like it's been, it's been seven days. That's a variable, right? Because I changed the days on a thing. How would I use this equation to see if it works to give me four dollars? Feeling like I would put the seven here, right? Seven days. All right. Let's see what happens. 7 times negative 17. What's that? 17, 49, negative 119. Negative 119 plus 3, negative 116. So according to this equation, he has negative 116. Dollars, but if this is the story, he should have four dollars. So what's going on there? Should be he should be up four dollars, but this equation says. So you know, let's start with the story. Doesn't seem to match this equation. No, it doesn't. Right? Not to say that we couldn't like tweak it a little bit and make it work. It might be a ridiculous story that doesn't make sense, but at least the numbers would work. They were gonna make it make sense. But I mean Cameron, tell me how you figured out that he has four dollars after seven days. this equation? No, no. Completely backwards. Backwards, like the x is on the 3, yeah. not on the 17. Yeah. So what story would fit? If it be a guy, would 
I lost seventeen dollars. What do you lose seventeen days? Seventeen days? I said dollars. I think it's thirteen. You said dollars. I said dollars. Does he lose like? Would this make sense that he loses seventeen dollars? Just like he's walking to work and somebody takes seventeen dollars from him? No, he has to lose seventeen x days. He has to lose. Seventeen dollars every time. every time. Yeah, good, good general answer. I like general answer. Every time, every minute, every hour, every day, every year, every whatever. Right. So the rate that he gains has to actually go backwards. It has to be negative. Okay, this is the rate, right? This is what I multiply by the times, by the days, by the hours, by the minutes, by whatever. Somebody think they can come up with a story that makes sense with this equation? Cameron? Okay. <clears throat> Lana had terrible sight. She had walked backwards for 17 miles. Lana. But she was turned around for three miles for every day. She walked backwards 17 miles. 17 miles every day. Every day she walks backwards 17 miles a day. Okay, but? She was turned around three miles. And then she went right back to walking 17 miles backwards every day? Yep. Okay. So she's walking backwards. She walks backwards. She has terrible sight. And she's walking backwards. Uh, every day she goes 17 miles in a negative direction. But at some point, for some reason, she goes forward just a solid three miles. So she goes forward three miles for some reason. Maybe, I don't know why. Maybe, uh, maybe an eagle picks her up, just carries her three miles down the road, and she starts walking backwards again. Okay? So uh, let's just kind of make it easier on ourselves and say, like, okay, she was about to walk back 17 miles a day, but the eager eagle picked her up and and flew her three miles forward, but then she started walking backwards mm -hmm. 17 miles a day. After five days, where is she? How many miles is she? Well, you just multiply 17 by five. Okay, what would you do with that? Okay, what would you do with that? Track three. Plus three. Plus three? Because it's negative 55. Is it negative 55? Well, so it's negative 17. Yeah. So it's a negative 17. Yeah. Moving back, which is a negative rate. Right. Right. She has a loss. She's losing. She's losing 17 miles a day. She wants to go that way, but she keeps walking that way. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> uh, there's that three miles, that merciful eagle. Right, so she is now back 82 miles from where she started and no nearer where she wants to be. Exactly. So we found out that what needs, what part of a, of a story with this kind of an equation needs to be negative? What, what part of the story needs to be negative? The 17. 17 days. Let's, uh, let's say that I, instead of miles and, and days, Let's change the story to involve money. Let's just, I'm just gonna generally say money. Okay, so write a story that doesn't involve miles, it involves money. Tell me about that. Right, but we just decided that we need to be losing money for some reason. Or the, the money that we have needs to be decreasing. Somebody's be walking, somebody's walking. It's wrong. It's a game near turn, but these dollars go? How can someone's amount of money that they have go down? You lost your wallet. Well, your wallet. losing your wallet, that's just a one-time thing, right? No, John. John goes to a grocery store every day and buys $17 worth of, I don't know, cabbages or something like that. Right. And one day he picked up a $3 bill on the way there. Sure. There, there's something right there. Every day, $17 a day.
spent, right? He's spending this much. Maybe that's great. He has $17 worth of food every day. So he's not really losing anything. He's gaining food, but he is losing money, right? His money is going down. And then it says nothing to do with his job. He's getting money from his job. But if the situation with how much money he has, you know, in his food budget is going down, right? It can't go on forever. Sometimes these functions need to end at some point and to be realistic, right? Nothing can go on for all eternity. So as far as real world applications, there's some limit on that. But we are spending money, we're losing money. We're having less money. Right? We spent $17 a day and found $3. The thing we're learning here is that we don't find $17 or lose $17. We find $3. Somebody gives us $3, whatever. We just get $3, one time. It's the $70 that we are whatever every time, every day, every hour, every whatever, okay? Uh, so we could be losing money just because we're spending it. And if we wanted to spend it, you're spending it on food, you could, you're renting something for $17 an hour or a day, like maybe a, not much a bouncy house costs, but maybe a bouncy house costs $17 an hour, right? Well, I'm losing money. Every time an hour goes by, I have 17 less dollars, right? And the graph of that, it would look like, well, I have three, right? And then I'm losing $17. change. Right? How about this? Like, if I were to look at this graph, what, what's happening here as, as I go this direction on the x? Is there more of the whatever or less of the whatever? More of the whatever. More of the whatever. The whatever being here. This is the whatever axis. Right? And this is like usually the time axis. Usually. Time versus dollars versus miles versus uh, the level of knowledge, I don't know, like whatever, right? This axis represents whatever. This axis could represent whatever as well, usually represents time, hours, days, okay? And this is showing an increase in whatever. Right? And this is showing what? A decrease. A decrease in whatever. This equation looks like y equals mx something times x, a rate times x, plus b. b, which we can think of. It's not exactly this, but we can think of it as a place where we start. Right? We can't think of it as a place where we start purely mathematically speaking because there's no start to this. This line goes on forever in the negative direction, too. Right? Uh, this one has y equals mx plus b where m is, what kind of a letter is that? A negative. A negative. So it's less than. Less than positive? Less than positive. How about less than zero? There you go. Number one less than zero, so the negative one. This is less than positive. M is greater than zero. Okay. So our rate is positive, means that we're gaining whatever over time. Here we're losing whatever over time. Here. We went to work and we're earning money. Here, we're renting a bouncy house. We're earning money or going to the grocery store. We're walking backwards for no reason other than we have bad eyesight. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we got positive slope, negative slope. What's this show? That doesn't look good. No slope. Steady. Nothing's changing. I like the word change. What's changing? We get a positive change, a negative change. No change. Nothing's changing. Just if anything's changing, it's just time. But the whatever is not changing. The dollars aren't changing. The miles aren't changing. Nothing is changing. Okay. What about this? Straight up and down. Everything changed at no point in time. Everything changed to every possible value in zero time. Right going along, nothing happens, and then instantly I have every amount of money ever, <laughs> <laughs> and then nothing. Like, not even zero after that, just nothing. 
non-existence. Let's take a look at that graph again. It's kind of an interesting thing. Here's what I like. I like this, this uh, graph of the car for this one. Okay. Let's make a vertical line, except for this program is not exactly perfect. So I'm going to have to make this a little wider than real. And I'm going to try to make a vertical line. Okay, so when I move this over, what are we gonna see, like right here? Just nothing. Just cars. Here. What about here? No. No cars. No cars. No cars. No cars. Then what? It's just gonna have here. No word. Yeah. What is? Car. The car blue is cars. just gonna. The car. The blue car is just blue gonna appear out nowhere. It's just gonna be like. And there's gonna be millions of blue cars. Uh, there's gonna be millions of blue cars. Or if there's one car, it's in millions of places. All at once. Okay. Whoa. So <laughs> maybe if I go like this too. Do you understand what I'm trying to do here, right? I'm trying to get it so that it actually has a data point for. I suppose I should have done it this way first. Here we have a vertical line, right? There. If I had done this right, what would we see? All these, the blue car would be at every place. Right? It would cover completely. It would just be a blue streak, a car. Uh, and how fast would it be changing? So fast. So fast, yeah, exactly. Not no change, but all of the change, all at once. It is not just changing, it's here and it's here at exactly the same time. It, yeah, it's, it, when it started, it was over and it, no time passed. This is impossible, right? Is it possible for you not to go anywhere? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's possible for time to change and for distance not to change. Is it possible for distance to change and for time not to change? No. You can't have this distance change and have no time change. Can we just watch this? I want to see how heavy. <laughs> it was everywhere, all at once, and all it crashed into every car. Okay. Uh, so this is it's just impossible. When we, I mean, not that graphs like this don't exist. It's just that when we start, start to talk about the slope of it or the rate of change, it's an impossible rate of change. It's all of the dollars, all at once, and then no dollars. Right. It's impossible. So we have a positive slope, a negative slope, a zero slope because we have zero change over forever. Mm -hmm. And here this is just impossible. It's just an undefined slope. The change, there's no way to define this change. It's ridiculous to even talk about because nothing can do this. Nothing can change this way. Okay? I wonder if our life was like the undefined slope. I'm just not here, then all of a sudden I'm everywhere and gone for like a split second. That would be insanity. And and lose all that now.